So unless you've been living under a rock, you might know that Slumdog Millionaire star Dev Patel just came out with his own debut feature titled Monkey Man. The film, a mad dash through the dark streets of Bombay, has garnered rave reviews due to Patel's reinvigorating interpretation of the action genre. Though it might appear a bit simple at glance, it's just another vengeance piece starring a masked vigilante, perhaps. But do not be fooled, the film is laden with extremely poignant themes as well as complex Indian symbology, kind of making feel as if there's something deeper lurking just beneath the surface. We at Marvelous Videos are especially interested in the bloody yet ambiguous ending, which almost begs for further analysis. Thus, in this video, we shall be diving deep into the ending of the film and figuring out what these events mean for the future of the franchise. But before we move on, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It might be a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. With that out of the way, please grab some tissues because it's going to get pretty bloody in here. The story. Monkey Man is in many ways a story about returning to one's roots, both for the creator, Deb, and our protagonist, Kid. So I guess it did make sense that Deb cast himself in the role of the titular Monkey Man. That and the fact that he is genuinely a pretty phenomenal actor. The film bears all the hallmarks of a typical dream project, with Patel serving as both the director and the storyteller. Deb has confessed that for him this project serves as a vehicle to fight against the abuses he had faced at the hands of the system. Most critics have pointed out that the film bears an almost provocative pessimism in its worldview, which is, in our opinion, the secret ingredient that brings the Monkey Man's vibrant world to life. The result is something that is quite a one of a kind. A stylish roller coaster of a ride that jumps from one brutal fist fight to another at a lightning pace. Patel has repeatedly stated his admiration of old school martial arts films by legends like Bruce Lee, and the influences is quite obvious in the spectacular set pieces. Another prominent influence are the John Wick films, whose style has been borrowed in many neon-drenched fight sequences. Despite drawing from such diverse references, Monkey Man still manages to find its own voice by grounding the film in a very believable yet harsh environment. The streets of Mumbai in this film aren't romanticized. Instead, they're sheer nightmares to behold. Of course, there's beauty even in the grit, which is a testament to the cinematographer Sharon Mears' skill with a camera. The film follows Kid, a young Indian underground boxer, on his journey through the dark underbelly of Mumbai, where everything is on sale and only the rich are thriving. The rest, like our protagonists, live far away from the shiny skyscrapers and the neon-lit clubs, nameless and lost in the labyrinthine streets. One point in the film, Dev even remarks that they don't even see us, a clear indicator of how inconsequential the lower classes are in this hyper-capitalistic society. Well, thanks to Kid, things might just change for the better, as you will soon see. You first find Kid in an underground fight club, where he is getting beaten to a pulp. This happens quite a lot in this movie, and Deb really managed just to sell every brutal punch. Anyway, we soon figure out that the stoic brawler is fueled by one singular objective, vengeance. The object of his hatred is Rana Singh, a ruthless police officer who played a pretty huge hand in uprooting Deb's life back when he was still a child. A towering giant of a man, Rana is played by Sikandir Kir, who comes across as a truly detestable human being. Kid's path to vengeance begins when he is hired as an employee by Queenie, a shrew businesswoman who runs a shady brothel come nightclub. Quite obviously, Kid has not picked up his job to find success in the food industry. His reasons are much more violent than that. Turns out that Rana is a regular at the joint due to his fondness for cocaine and women. Kid begins stalking his prey, but Rana is actually a pretty difficult man to corner. With the help of his acquaintance, a lowly peddler named Alfonso, Kid manages to get into the inner circle where only the wealthiest hang out. Our protagonist proves that he isn't really the patient kind and quickly hatches a plan to dispose of Rana. Along the way, Kid also encounters a troubled concert named Sita, who seems to have a soft corner for our protagonist. Though the planet involves one of the cutest dogs ever, it still doesn't turn out well for Kid. After he misses his mark, an honestly terrifying fistfight breaks out between Rana and the Kid, which ends with our protagonist battered and broken. Rana, merely wounded, manages to escape, while a horse of professional killers descend upon our hero. This leads to a nerve-wracking chase through the claustrophobic streets of Mumbai. It should suffice to say that none of us will probably get into an Indian auto without breaking a sweat. Owing to Rana's status as a top-tier policeman, it soon becomes evident that Kid is not facing just goons, but the cumulative might of the entire Mumbai police force. In the face of these overwhelming odds in his wooden state, it seems as if it's the end for Kid, but he manages to escape by jumping off into a river. After this point, the film leads even further into Indian theology and customs, with Kid being rescued by a group of trans women called Ichiras. Kid comes to his senses to find the 
the leader of the group Alpha by his side and the two soon form a bond. Alpha claims to be the caretaker of a derelict temple and even manages to draw out Kid's childhood trauma through a strange ritual. We learned that many years ago Kid lived in a small idyllic village with his mother Neela. Life was simple yet good however one day the incredibly powerful pseudo-religious leader Baba Shakti casts his evil eye upon Kid's perfect home. As you can probably tell by now this leads to the utter destruction of the small hamlet with Rana Singh serving as the Baba's weapon. Singh even tries to assault Kid's mother before killing her and burning their hut to ashes. Suddenly Kid's violent quest almost begins to feel like a rational response. His time at the temple allows Kid to confront his demons and even tame them. In a pretty sick training montage, Kid grows stronger to the beat of some rhythmic Indian drums. After achieving the physique of a Greek god, Kid finally finds himself ready for the challenge that lies ahead. While Kid was recuperating in a temple, things have really gone to the dogs on the streets outside. Baba Shakti and Rana seem to be all set to win a historic election on the auspicious occasion of Diwali. It soon becomes clear that they would have to be stopped before they can attain such power in the government. What follows is a painting in red. The climax of Monkey Man is a pure treat, a violent, gory piece of poetry set to heart-throbbing music. Kid fights and fights all the way to the very top of the elitist hellhole that is Queenie's Club. He is accompanied by the extremely terrifying band of Ijaras, who definitely made many of Rana's henchmen question all their life choices. Even Sita comes into her own and reduces Queenie to a bloody mess on the floor. After wiping out a small army of gunmen, Monkey Man finally manages to slay the dreaded Rana Singh, but there's still someone who is yet to atone for their crimes. The kid emerges on the top floor to find himself face to face with the malicious Baba Shakti. In a typical villain move, the godman stabs our hero in the back, but he gets killed nonetheless. In the last moments of the film, we see Kid collapsing from his injuries. In his visions, he sees his village along with all the people he has ever loved. And for a fleeting moment, it feels like our hero has found his peace. The ending explained. Now, Monkey Man ends on a pretty ambiguous note for a vengeance film. It neither confirms nor denies whether Kid survived his wounds. Maybe if we dive a bit deeper into the symbols and secrets embedded in the film, we might come up with some answers to these intriguing questions. It's no secret that the film borrows pretty heavily from the mythology surrounding the Hindu monkey god Hanuman. Throughout the film, there are ample references to God, and at one point, Kid and his mother even sing a song in Hanuman's honor. The idea of a divine monkey emerged from the Indian text Ramayana, which was written around 1500 BCE. Yeah, that's really, really old. Moreover, the film also tells us of a particular instance involving the monkey god where he swallowed his son after mistaking it for a mango. Interestingly, Hanuman is killed by the angry god Indra by the end of this tale, only to be restored to life. Now, the parallels between Hanuman and Kid are pretty evident in the film. Like, the man literally rips his chest open, just like the god and I mean it doesn't get even more direct than that. If this theme is followed, then it only stands to reason that Kid could also be revived after the last scene of the film. After all, we never actually see the brawler die. Almost most Hollywood protagonists have a real knack for surviving near-death situations, and it wouldn't be a surprise if Kid followed that pattern. But to be honest, based on the scope of Monkey Man's story, it actually makes sense for Kid's journey to be at its end. Firstly, he has achieved all the goals he set out to accomplish, and second, the film works well as a standalone film, and not everything needs to be a franchise. However, just like Hanuman, death isn't the end for Kid, and we would completely be hyped if he were to make a violent return. Will there be a Monkey Man 2 and what does the future hold? It's common knowledge that sequels in Hollywood depend on one key factor, profits. While true, Monkey Man does seem to be doing well at the box office right now, but the show business is nothing if not unpredictable. But yeah, if the film does well throughout its run, a sequel to a lucrative action film seems inevitable. Still, if the kid's story continues, the vigilante is sure to face some unprecedented challenges. If the Monkey Man returns, he would undoubtedly have to be way more careful as the massacre at the King's Hotel would entail his face being plastered across every TV screen in the country. Also, since Baba Shakti was an incredibly powerful individual, it's only natural that another maniacal overlord will take his place. The Underworld would also be weary of the Monkey Man after his actions in the film, thus making it even more difficult for him to function in the sequel. Though a sequel is yet to be confirmed, we can certainly say that there's always a need for good action films, and Monkey Man 2 will definitely satiate our cravings. 
Marvelous Verdict Monkey Man is a film that directly takes on the difficult topics like class inequality, making it much more than a standard action film. The world of the film is still as harsh as it was before the events of the film, making it obvious that the city does need a vigilante. Though the film's ending doesn't make it obvious there's immense scope for a sequel to Monkey Man as there are more than enough problems to be solved. But for now, all we fans can do is wait. Also, go watch The Monkey Man because it's the kind of experience that will haunt you for days afterward. And and that is it for today, but tell us what parts of the film you loved the most in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to always be updated with the rest of our marvelous content. We'll see you on our next one.